Yer, what's up, Giants fans, hub watchers, YouTube subscribers, Twitter and Instagram followers? It's your boy No Name back at it again with another Giants training camp update video. Uh, first things first, guys, I like to apologize a little bit for my last video. I kind of rushed it out a little bit. There were some weird cuts and edits with the sound, and in general, I felt like I skimmed over up a lot of information instead of going. A little in-depth which is what I like to do with these videos it was just a time constraint thing and I wanted to still get something out there to you guys so first and foremost apologize for that and with that out of the way let's get into uh, Thursday's training camp now this training camp uh, similar to ones a couple days ago it wasn't as exciting as yesterday's but that doesn't mean it's a bad thing we had instead a lot of development today a lot of progression plays in general a lot of development of guys that we haven't heard from in a while uh, names I'll be throwing around names like John Jalapio Paul Perkins and Benny Fowler really caught my attention a couple of those guys specifically Benny Fowler has been doing his thing since OTAs but I it's like it comes to a situation where it's like you need to see these guys do their job at a high level more than once you can't just look at it one time and then say all right we got something going here because when Benny Fowler started for us in the 2018 season, I believe he started like four, four, four or five times. It's not as though he played bad, but he wasn't good either. He was very much a non-factor, not really a name you heard that much. I think, if anything, the Redskins game would probably have been his best, as was a lot of other receivers on our team. Because in that Redskins game, everybody got to shine, you know, in their own way. Now, injury update. I haven't done one of these in a while because we haven't really had a major injury update in a while. But linebacker BJ Goodson is out with a hamstring injury. I think this is like our third or fourth guy now on the team that's out with a hamstring. We got Darius Slayton uh, for a while. Evan Ingram, but he came back. There's somebody else that slew my mind also on a receiving end. And BJ Goodson. Oh, yeah. Sam Beal of the cornerbacks. He was out with a hamstring injury. There's a lot of guys. I don't know. <laughs> Maybe they're not doing their conditioning properly or something, but this is this is a type of injury that's come up a lot. Hopefully he can return. Once again, Pat Shermer says, as he has said with every single hamstring injury so far, it's not something too serious, not something too terrible, and they hope to get him back soon. Now going back to the names we haven't heard in a while. First up, John Jalapio. This is something I was I told myself I was gonna take a look at, I was gonna pay attention to when training camp came around. But amongst all the the uh, violations with NFL rules, a lot of injuries we got, mostly stuff going on with the wide receiver group, I really forgot to look at the competition at our offensive line. Not saying that I forgot to completely look at the offensive line. I'm pretty sure I spoke about Solder and Remmers in my last video. In general, they've been improving a lot, and I, I'm glad to see that everybody's winning their one-on-one matchups. Like nobody's worried about Kevin Zeitler. Uh, nobody's really worried about Will Hernandez. Nate Solder, we hope and we expect to progress um, and perform at least at an average level, definitely above average. The guys we're really worried about were the center spot and the right tackle, which uh, the leaders right now, most likely going to be John Jalapio and Mike Remmers. So speaking of John Jalapio, he's been doing a great job, not only today, but throughout all of OTAs in sort of leading that battle for the center position. And as we all know, Spencer Pulley is no slouch. In my opinion, He's a good starter. He's a pretty average starter. He did a commendable job for us last year when we got him, I believe. I know Jamal Brown was from the Rams. I'm not sure what Spencer Pulley's former team was. I want to say Rams also, but then that would be kind of weird. But we got him off of waivers either way or um, around the bye week, and he came in, and he did a great job at center. All right, so say he did a good job. In my opinion, and this is just my opinion, the center position is the least important on the offensive line. Uh, it's definitely the one that requires the least amount of athleticism and physical skill. It's more so a position where you need a good football IQ. And even then, it's a lot more dependent on your chemistry and relationship with your quarterback than it is on your own IQ. So center for me, it shouldn't be too hard for us to find a good center, whether it's through free agency or through draft. That's why I believe we got Spencer Pulley, who was pretty good. And it looks like Jalapio is giving him a run for the money for the starting position. Uh, we saw Jalapio for two games last year, and he did a pretty good job in those two games. He went down week two, I think, like halfway through the game in week two. 
and he was doing a pretty good job. In fact, up until that point, he was ranked our best uh, best offensive lineman by Pro Football Focus and Sport Track. And Shermer, the way he tried to gauge it out to these guys to battle it out, he tried to uh, split first team reps between them equally, but that's not really what happened. We saw John Jalapio get a lot of the first team reps and Spencer Foley mostly spending time with the second and third team. But even then, you could gauge, and I guess the coaches believe they could still get a good idea of who, who, who should be a starter. As of right now, though, it's Jalapio. Let me know who you guys think it should be. In my opinion, like I said, for me, the center position is the least important on the offensive line. And the offensive line as a whole is important, of course, but I think it doesn't really matter. I, in my opinion, you know, Spencer Pulley has enough qualifications for the job, uh, but if John Halpia beats him out, so be it. He beat him out, and that's that. Next up, Paul Perkins, a name we haven't heard of in a long time. And I'm pretty sure myself, along with a lot of other Giants fans, up until this uh, OTAs and training camp began, I completely forgot that Perkins was on the team. He was a running back we took in the fifth round of 2016 draft, I believe, or the 2015 draft. And in 2016, in the second half of the season more so, he really took a lot of snaps for us as the running back position. He was all right. There wasn't nothing to write home about. I mean, in my opinion, he was pretty below average, maybe average at best. But he, he was serviceable. And then in 2017, didn't really see much of him. We saw a lot more Wayne Gallman because I'm pretty sure he was injured in 2017. Or they took him off the team in 2017. Here's the thing, right? It's kind of confusing with the story of Perkins. One year between 2017 and 2018 season, one year he was off, he was actually off the team and the other year he was injured. Whatever the case may be, we got Saquon now and we have Wayne Gallman now, he's, who's an all right backup. Uh, I believe what we're looking for is a good third guy that's more of a bruiser back that could take a lot of hits, maybe get some tough short runs, like, you know, some third and ones and whatnot. I'm pretty sure that's what we're looking for. Perkins is certainly built different from Gallman and Saquon. And maybe if he packs on a bit of muscle weight, he can be that third guy. But, you know, as right now, it remains to be seen. He had a good day today. Perkins tried to expand his game. He now can pass catch as a lot of running backs in today's league can. He had a really good play today. He was covered by uh, Jonathan Anderson, one of our linebackers, and he worked his way up the left sideline. There, DJ managed to drop it in perfectly, like from somewhere around like 45, 50 yards for a touchdown. Really good play by Perkins, showing that he could be a viable receiving option now as a running back. Even the coach, Craig Johnson, our running back coach, said he did think that Perkins had a bit of a quote-unquote rust on him, but now he's playing well. He's playing like the Perkins he knows. Next up of, as of a guy that we haven't really heard of is Benny Fowler. Similar to what I did for Jalapio, this is just going to be a general recap of his uh, spring, uh, not spring, summer training camp so far. He's had a really good training camp. He's been showing out a lot. And he's become quite the favorite target of Daniel Jones and Alex Tanney when the few times he's in the third team reps. And now that he's been in some first team reps, even Eli's been hitting, you know, hitting him down the sideline sometimes up a seam round and whatnot. He's really shown, at, at least in training camp in this type of situation, you know, I take everything with a grain of salt. He's shown that he could be a reliable receiver. Like I said, he's become a favorite target. Meaning that the quarterbacks now trust him and have a certain type of chemistry with him to zip that ball down to him. He's been using his body and athleticism to the best of his ability to make some great catches and great runs and sometimes even get a touchdown. Today, I'm pretty sure uh, pretty sure Eli hit him today on a score from 1-7 to seven, seven on 7 drills. Speaking of which, great segue for the quarterbacks. Eli and Daniel Jones, they both have really good days today. I really want to talk about Jones a little bit more, but a quick summary on Eli. Once again, hitting Shepard for a one-handed catch. And uh, I think Shermer has something funny to say in the media hour today about the one-handed catch yesterday. Apparently, Eli wasn't supposed to throw to him, but he did it because it was a heat-of-the-moment decision. He forgot that he wasn't supposed to throw to him. Uh, Shermer kind of called it off-handedly a little bit of a stupid play, but it worked out well in the end, so I don't really think anybody's too mad about it. Today... I don't know whether or not he was still supposed to avoid throwing to Shepard, but whatever the case was, he still targeted him a couple of times. And he also had touchdowns to Evan Ingram, Benny Fowler, as I mentioned before, and great passes to CJ Conrad, and Alex Tanney had a, pa a touchdown pass to CJ Conrad. Another guy that I think that could make this team, make the 53-man roster from the undrafted free agent list. 
And another thing to say on Eli, I'm not sure if the players are just doing this to, you know, to big him up, to make the fans feel a bit more confident in him, to maybe even build Eli's confidence, or maybe they're just telling straight up the truth. But today, a lot of players came out during the media hour and after practice, mostly the receivers saying that they're surprised with the strength and the speed in general, the zip that Eli is putting on the ball when he's throwing it towards them. Russell Shepard said he he's surprised by the zip on the ball, made a joke about how Eli could play for, I don't know, five, 10 more years. As much as I love Eli, I wouldn't want that to happen for the Giants, you know, for obvious reasons, such as wasting Jones' rookie contract and whatnot. Uh, Shepard said he's amazing. Uh, it's amazing to see that Eli still has zip on the ball. Evan Ingram mentioned that he's seeing more zip on the ball, definitely referring to the uh, baseball training that he's been doing in the offseason. And Pat Shermer even said, but he said this last year too, that Eli looks really good. It's great. Now, this is really great if they're saying this straight up, just out of truth, like out of their experiences through a training camp and whatnot. But it seems to me that every single Giants training camp, players come out and say something similar, or they all say, whether it's coaches or whatnot, oh, Eli's looking really good, he's looking better than ever. Like, similar comments to last year's training camp too. So um, as much as I am excited for it, I will tell you all, take it with a grain of salt. You know, we've, we've heard this story before, in other words. And finally, last person I wanna talk about is the other quarterback, Daniel Jones, our sixth overall pick. He had three touchdowns today. The one to Paul Perkins, which was a great, like, I don't know, it had to be around 50 yard pass down the sideline. Both of them made a great play there, Perkins and Jones. He had one to Russell Shepard and another one to Scott Simonson, who right now is our third tight end. Maybe subject to change, but I think Scott Simonson is a really good third tight end. In general, today, Daniel Jones had a great aggressive outlook on the game one he's taken up since i say about two days ago when he threw his first interception in the camp and i like to see that like he's getting all the aggression out you know right now testing testing out what he wants to test out now making the bad throws now making the great plays now i want him to do everything now that's when you want your rookie quarterbacks and all your players in general to do everything in the offseason that's what the offseason is for is to figure out what you're good at figure out what you and your teammates have built chemistry on so that when you go into the regular season you don't make really stupid mistakes now that's not to say now that's not to say that all mistakes are cleaned up we that's sort of impossible but now is when you want to get majority of stuff out of the way and even Shermer has similar comments on it he said it's great to see that Daniel's taking an aggressive but smart outlook in training camp right now it's just this is why I wanted him to sit too. He had, he would have more time to do a lot of this in a lot of practices and in a lot of scrimmages if he sat a couple of games this upcoming season or even the whole season. But the only way I see that happening is if we're somewhat competitive. But that's what I got for you all today. Let me know what you all think down in the comments below. Like, share, subscribe. I'm out. Yer.